Hey everybody, today is Sunday, Memorial Day weekend. Happy Memorial Day, everybody. Question I get a lot lately is, cow lasers, how come we haven't made a Forest Fan video in so long? Do you know where the treasure is? Uh, no, I don't. But I haven't made a Forest Fan video because I've been busy. I had the Grand Adventure and I had these coins I've been dealing with. But also, uh, there's a lot of people that are making videos now, right? So I've been watching them. I've kind of stepped back and I've been watching some of the other videos that have been out. And I think it's great. You know, the more the merrier. We've all got our own opinion and uh, it's great to put it up there. But today's the day I decided to revisit the Warm Waters video. On December 1st, 2016, I put up a Forest Fen Warm Waters video. And I'll link this up here in the corner uh, if you guys want to watch that video. But I'm going to show you a technique I used in that video that might explain why so many people have warm waters wrong. Uh, I'm sure half the people that are watching this know where warm waters hauled, right? But only one of those people can be right. So something's going on with these warm waters. Forrest Fenn, what has Forrest Fenn said about warm waters? It's the hardest clue. Without that figured out, you're never going to, you don't have anything. You're just going out on a nice vacation. You've got to know where Warm Waters Hall, where that location is, uh, before you ever have a chance to find the rest of the clues. A month ago, uh, I was on lunch from work, Capriati's, and right next door is a comic book shop. So while I'm waiting for the uh, sandwich, I went over there, and I happened to see this on the shelf. Action Comics. And what's special about this Action Comics, if you don't know, Action Comics started in 1936. Uh, that's where Superman was created in that comic, right? 1936, and what's special about this comic, and I just happened to be in there at the time it came out, is this is Action Comics number 1,000. 1,000 issues of Action Comics. I like comic books. I've got a book or a box around here somewhere um, of old comics. And uh, what caught my attention on the 1,000 is uh, Forrest Fenn's comment that the treasure chest might be not be found for 1,000 years. With so many people working on it, how is it possible that the treasure chest might not be found for a thousand years? Have you, have you ever heard of that? Now, since then, he's come out and said his gut feeling is it might be found this summer, right? But why would he come out and say the treasure chest, he thinks the treasure chest may not be found for a thousand years? It seems to me logical to say... It, because it has to do with warm waters and where they halt. That so many people are wrong on what they think warm waters are and where they halt. That could be one reason why it might not be found for a thousand years. And maybe, and then the, uh, the opposite is true. Maybe somebody has given him what they think warm waters are and they were right. So now maybe he's saying his gut feeling is maybe it'll be found this summer. And maybe it's more than one person. Maybe it's, you know, a couple people. Maybe more and more people are coming are joining uh, together with the idea of where warm waters halt. And maybe that's why he thinks maybe it will be found this summer. So I'm going to show you something from that video uh, a year and a half ago that I made. You know, back then there weren't that many videos out on uh, Forest Fen. There were some, but not that many. Not like it is today. And I think the little theory that I had, my, my, my thoughts on warm waters have changed a little bit, but the basic theory I think is the same. And let me show you a little technique I use to try and explain what I'm talking about. If I show you this box with these numbers, and I ask you what goes here in this box, I think 98% or so of you would say the 6 goes in the box. Based on the numbers that are presented, a 6 would go right here. But what if I told you that's not correct? To solve this, what goes here is not even a number. Think about it for a minute. How can it not be a number? It's because you don't know the context of what this diagram represents. The obvious answer is six. The obvious answer to warm waters is a hot spring. Everybody is looking through the Rocky Mountains for a six. When in reality, the answer is, my little treasure chest, the answer is R, the letter R. Well, how does that make any sense? Well, when you see that what we're talking about and what that diagram represented was a gear shift, it makes a little more sense now, doesn't it?
and I apply to this to the chase in this way. Everybody's looking for a 6, and we should be looking for an R. We gotta figure out what those warm waters are before we can find out where they halt. And it's not a hot spring. It's not a dam. I don't even think it's a river. It may not even have anything to do with water. Alright, so what do you think? Everybody, when they hear where do warm waters halt, what are we looking at? We're looking at water. We're looking at rivers. We're looking at streams. We're looking at hot springs. We're looking at lakes. We're looking at those four things that the name has to do with warm waters, right? Uh, uh, fire hole, um, you know, agua, whatever. And that's how we think, oh, this could be it. This could be the warm waters. But when Forrest was asked, you guys know that he said there are a thousand places, uh, there are, th excuse me, there are a thousand hot springs north of Santa Fe. There are a thousand hot springs and most of them are north of Santa Fe. Look at the big picture. That was his advice to a searcher that asked him a question about warm waters. Look at the big picture. So something's going on. Something's going on with these warm waters. How are we, as a searcher, supposed to know what Forrest Fenn had in his mind when he, um, when he created that first clue and put it in the poem? So, and my theory really hasn't changed. I think this is a possibility that... Well, first, when I look at warm waters, the first thing I do is try and narrow down the four states, right? You know, back when the book first came out, it was in the mountains north of Santa Fe, period. Rocky Mountains didn't come into it until after it blew up on TV, and a lot more people were involved. But in the beginning, it was just somewhere in the mountains north of Santa Fe. Um, so I've always been partial to New Mexico because of that. The other thing that Forrest Fenn has said in that Richard Eads interview, which I think is very important, uh, they're talking about the poem and they're talking about the clues, and Richard Eads says, it's going to take some long, uh, concentrated effort. And Forrest Fenn says, it doesn't take, and then he stops, and he says, you just have to think different things. Think different things. Look at the big picture, the big picture, and think different things. And what else has he said about uh, the poem and the clues? A comprehensive knowledge of geography might help, right? So there's something going on with warm waters. When I look at the big picture, I'm looking at the entire search area. And now that I've got to think of different things, maybe it's not water where warm waters halt. And imagination is more important than knowledge. I think it's too easy just to pick a water source and say, that's it. That's the one he meant. That's the warm waters. And this is where it halts because now it turns into cold or now it stops or whatever the other cases are that I've heard from a bunch of people. You have to think different things. Look at the big picture. Comprehensive knowledge of geography might help. So go to the thrill of the chase. I still think the thrill of the chase is very useful. Um, Am I a poem purist? Yeah, I mean, all the clues are in the poem, but in order to understand what he meant by those clues, I think you really do need the book. So anybody that doesn't have the book, I uh, encourage you to buy it. It's probably out now, I think, at the Collected Works bookstore, but it'll be back soon. And when we go to the chapter about the gold, you know, he says, so I figured it was time to act, so I wrote a poem. So if anybody who hasn't seen the book, if you're new to the chase, here's the poem. And on the very next page, he says a couple things about him writing the poem, hiding the chest. And right here, there's an interesting picture, right? This, if you don't know, this is an old map of New Mexico. Somebody uh, on one of the forums had said it's a map from like the 1800s, I believe. But they lined up the mountains here. They proved it. They did a side-by-side -side of that map, and you could see that this, this uh, whatever this road is, this mountain range, all this was there. It matched. This is an old map of New Mexico. So to me, he even says, uh, in the mountains north of Santa Fe. He didn't say in the mountains, all the way in the Rocky Mountains, all the way up to Canada or anything like that. All that came later. He just says it's in the mountains north of Santa Fe. So I think that might be one of our subtle clues that it's in New Mexico. I mean, he moved there, what, in the late, mid-70s? He hit the treasure chest, um, I think he got cancer in the mid-80s, right? Then he decided to, he wrote, took him 15 years to write the poem. So between the mid-70s and the mid-80s, the 88, I think, when he got diagnosed with cancer, 
he was there, let's call it 10 years. He was in New Mexico. He lived in New Mexico for 10 years. And I think during that time is when he could have found his spot. But anyway, I'm partial to New Mexico. The other thing is he shows some items from the chest, right? He shows some gold nuggets. And then he shows this gold frog. There's a gold coin underneath there. And then he shows this gold frog that's in the chest. And to me, it's interesting that he puts a frog on a map of New Mexico. Because when I think of frogs, where do frogs live? Lily pad, right? They live in the water. So could that be a subtle clue that the warm waters that we're looking for are in New Mexico because he shows a frog on a map of New Mexico? And the first thing I think of when I hear frogs, like I said, is lily pad and water. So if that's true, if all that is true, and yes, it's an assumption, I know. If all that's true and the where warm waters halt is in New Mexico, not up here, down here. Well, where in New Mexico? Where do warm waters halt? There are a thousand hot springs north of Santa Fe, right? Look at the big picture. So if we look at the big picture in New Mexico, what are warm waters? If you talk to people who live in New Mexico who are fishermen and you ask them, what are warm waters? They're gonna tell you it's related to fishing, right? The New Mexico fishing regulation. It applies, it still counts. A lot of people just discount that. Some people have said, oh, that's specialized knowledge. Well, the whole thrill of the chase, a big portion of it is about him being a fishing guide, right? Yes, it's all up in uh, Yellowstone, but a lot of the um, book is about fishing, fly fishing. You know, that book, Fly Water, everybody talks about. He's a fisherman. A lot of people think the poem is based around uh, fishing. Poem of brown, brown trout, put in, uh, boating term or fishing term. And if fishing is a clue that we're supposed to take, well, then why not Yellowstone? Because that's where he was a fishing guy. Because, as I stated, there's a map of New Mexico in the book. The treasure is in the mountains north of Santa Fe. Not north in the Rocky Mountains somewhere, just north of Santa Fe. All right, Kyle Laser. So let's say the warm waters do have to do with the New Mexico fishing regulations because they are designated warm waters, plural. Okay. Well, now what? How do you find which one? There's all kinds of warm waters designated in New Mexico. Well, this is where the big picture comes in. And this is where I think you have to think different things. Instead of trying to find a specific warm waters in New Mexico as designated by the New Mexico fishing regulation. And I know there's people out there that have done that. They've actually been looking at where waters transition from warm to non-warm or cold using the, the New Mexico fishing regulation map, right? But I don't think we're supposed to do it that way. I think why it's so hard for people to come up with the correct warm waters and why we're supposed to look at the big picture and why we're supposed to think different things is where do all the warm waters halt? The New Mexico fishing regulations, where do all those waters halt? Well, they halt at the border between New Mexico and Colorado, right? They halt because Colorado doesn't have a warm waters designation. So where warm waters halt is at the border. I still think it applies. You know, a lot of people have thought about this and shot it down because it doesn't make sense. But to me, it does make sense after the things he said. There's a thousand hot springs north of Santa Fe. Look at the big picture. A comprehensive knowledge of geography. You need to know where the border is. That would be a comprehensive knowledge of geography. You have to, it doesn't take long, concentrated effort of trying to find individual hot springs. You have to think different things. Most people would automatically dismiss the border between New Mexico and Colorado because there's no water that stops there. The waters don't halt at the border. You're right. The physical water doesn't, and that's the trick. The fishing designation does halt there. So if, I'm on, if the border is right here in this table and I'm on the New Mexico side... All these waters are designated as warm. But as soon as I step over the border in Colorado, that exact same river that crosses the border, those are no longer considered warm waters. Not physical warm waters, according to fishing. And that might be the subtle hints that are in the thrill of the chase. It's all about fishing. When you're talking about warm waters, refer it to fishing. And if it is the border... If New Mexico, Colorado is the border, well, where? That's a very long border, right? Now, well, where do we go? Well, now you look at the rest of the clues. Take it in the canyon down. So we're looking for a canyon that's right there at the border. 
And then you can do the rest of the clues from there. The, I guess the question is, does it have to be where an actual river comes through the border? And it could. I look at it both ways. It could be one of the rivers. I think there's four major rivers. I could be wrong. I think there's three or four major rivers that cross from Colorado to New Mexico. And where that river crosses could be the actual warm water spot. Um, again, I've been busy with the Grand Adventure and these coins, which I've got over half out in the mail, by the way. Um, so I haven't really spent much time looking into it yet, but I will. But I wanted to do another video, and I wanted to know what you guys thought. It's not a new idea, but I think it's an idea a lot of people have disregarded. And um, I know a Gypsy's Kiss... They uh, have used the New Mexico fishing regulations, if you watch their vlog, right? But I think the mistake Toby was making is he was actually looking at, wa at rivers and where they transition from warm waters to non-warm waters. So he's, he was in different spots in New Mexico trying to pinpoint the right one. And what I'm saying is it's all the warm waters. They all halt. Waters, plural, all the warm waters halt at the border by virtue of the definition. So what do you guys think? I think it is thinking a different thing that the, the, the different thing that most people think of when they first read the poem, that it's the border where warm waters halt. And then remember he says, and then there's some aber aberrations that live out on the edge. What's the edge but a border? And borderline biddies. I also, I've done another video on hints in the thrill of the chase where I think um, a border is a clue in the book. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. So you know He's looking on the map for Forrest Fenn's special place. And put it down below, let me know what you think. You can get the Forrest Fenn search coin right here. Other treasure you hunts, you know the info's here too. Subscribe to the channel, you and, never uh, yeah, know when there's a clue. Out. Mike Scott Calazar's coffee cup's coming soon. Like, comment, and share if you like this tune. And you do. Of course you do. Sing it! Calazar's cow lasers. Calazar's cow lasers.